So in this video, um, I will be solving some uh, sample problems uh, on with statics, you know, first. So there, I have collected uh, several problems, and uh, these are from my lecture slide. Uh, so here's the first problem. Uh, so in this drawing, so this house gets water, you know, uh, through the pipe. Uh, and the tank is placed at uh, uh, at an elevation of 100 feet, right? Uh, this elevation is 100 feet. Uh, and uh, it's asking what's the absolute water pressure and what's the um, gas pressure, uh, gas pressure uh, reading, water pressure reading uh, down here. So as you know uh, from our formula, the fluid pressure or water pressure just depends on the vertical depth. So vertical depth is 100 feet and you will have to convert into meters. Here's the conversion factor. Uh, and one more thing, uh, this the top end of the tank is open to the atmosphere. Okay. So there's an atmospheric pressure sitting on the top. Okay. It's not sealed, otherwise water can't flow. So the top end of the tank has to be uh, open to the atmosphere. So what's the water pressure down here? Right? And as you know, um, it doesn't depend on the shape and size of the pipe. Uh, it just depends on the elevation, you know, vertical depth. So our formula is um, pressure at the given depth, right? Pressure at any given depth is pressure at the top plus density of here in this case, water, gravity times the vertical height. So pressure at the bottom. Okay. And so pressure at the house is pressure at the top is just the atmospheric pressure. P, let's call P0. It's the atmospheric pressure, right? Because it's open to the atmosphere, right? Plus this is the density of the water, which is given and height. Uh, and so this is the formula we have. And make sure you have everything in standard unit because um, all the constants are given in standard units. So that's why you have to convert, you know, uh, all the given parameters in standard unit before you use them. So first of all, let's see. Uh, you're given the height in feet. So uh, your edge is 100 feet, right? So, but we want the height in meters. So it says one feet has 0 0.305 meters. So that means um, since one feet is that much meter, so you have to multiply by 0 0.305. So uh, that is 30.5 meter, right? And the density of water is uh, given in uh, standard unit already. So the pressure, this is the absolute pressure, exact uh, absolute pressure is given by pressure on the top, which is just the atmosphere pressure. One atmosphere has that much pressure, which is which will be given. 1.013 10 to the power fifth pascals right it's in pascals in standard plus this second term is the density of the fresh water so this is uh, density of water is thousand is given from the table you know gravity 9.8 and height in meters is 30.5 meters so that should be the absolute pressure at the house down here and if you do this calculation, it's for about 400,000 pascals. So it's about approximately 400,000. So, and this is 400 kilopascals. But it, it wants the pressure, absolute pressure in, in, you know, PSI. Okay, in PSI. So how do you, so, and the conversion factor is given to you. One, it says one Pascal has that much PSI. So then you can just do uh, 400,000 times multiply with that factor because, you know, one Pascal has that much. So that's basically about 58 PSI. And that about the water pressure in a house actually, if you measure. So that's, the water pressure down here is about 58 psi okay now we have to do one more thing it's also this is the absolute pressure you can say this is the actual or absolute pressure so but the pressure gauge is a meter you know 
uh, always read the gauge pressure so it's also asking what's the pressure gauge reading so gauge pressure uh, so from the lecture by definition pressure gauge or gauge pressure is just absolute pressure which is the house pressure we have just calculated minus one atmospheric pressure if you just you know if you just subtract the atmospheric pressure uh, it's gonna get you uh, the gauge pressure so then uh, now you can calculate 58 psi uh, you know so I'm gonna just do it in psi and uh, the atmospheric pressure in psi is about 15 psi okay you can source that in in standard unit is 101 you know kilopascals right but in, in psi is about 15 psi and one atmospheric pressure and that's your gauge pressure reading the water pressure at the house right and uh, that's your answer 43 psi is the gauge pressure water pressure read by the pressure gauge okay so it's just a simple um, problem to get started you know okay next <coughs> Next problem is, uh, in the given diagram it says, uh, you have a U-shaped tube, glass tube. One end is connected to the gas container. It has gas, whose pressure we have to calculate the pressure of this gas, right? Other end is just open to the atmosphere. This is just P0. It's just open to the atmosphere. And it's filled with some liquid, okay? It's, it says it's filled with some uh, mercury. Okay, it's filled with some mercury and based on that um, so because of the gas pressure so it maintains some height right because of the gas pressure um, pressure due to the gas it, it um, maintains this height and this height is given as 1.16 1.60 meters uh, and based on that it's asking what's the gas pressure what's the pressure due to the gas what's the absolute pressure the gas in this container that's the question okay and this is uh, similar to barometer reading I explained that in my lecture slide so it's like a barometer you know so this device is called a manometer you know in old days actually <clears throat> people used to measure gas pressure using manometer device like something like that okay here's the hint I gave you some hints here so if you draw at this junction, uh, if you draw an uh, uh, imaginary horizontal line here and say, let's say that this is, this point is point number one, let's say point number two, pressure at one and pressure at two must be equal, right? Because everything, everything is in a static equilibrium, right? This marker is not moving, right? So everything is in static balance. You know static equilibrium so that means the pressure here and pressure here must be same otherwise the mercury would flow from a higher to lower pressure right so that then that can be true because if this is in static so that's the starting point so pressure p1 left side this is since this is connected to the gas it has to be the gas pressure right which is what we want to calculate and pressure on the other side right pressure to we which we can calculate from our uh, this formula right because this is the pressure at the bottom right which is p2 is pressure on the top which is atmosphere pressure plus rho g h so pressure p2 is simply pressure on the top which is just p0 because it's open to the atmosphere plus density of now this liquid is filled with mercury so density of the mercury mercury symbol gravity times whatever height and that's it and just put the numbers so p0 is atmospheric pressure again 1.013 10 to the power fifth pascals plus the density of the mercury and if you go back and check the list of the density for different substances you will find 13600 that will be given and gravity 9.8 and height 1.6 that's given so that's your the that's the gas pressure you get so is if you do this kind of, it's about 1 3.14 10 to the power fifth pascal so that should be the gas pressures uh, in this container 
So next problem is something like that. So this vessel, this container is mm, this ship, you know, one end is open to the atmosphere, other end is sealed, it is uh, closed, and it's filled with some uh, liquid, oil, and oil density is given. And it's asking to find uh, the, uh, the fluid pressure, the oil pressure uh, exerted by the fluid oil uh, at different points, A, B, and C. And you're also given the scale, this vertical scale. This is in centimeter. Uh, and this is, op again, this end is open to the atmosphere, P0. Right? So it wants you to find the pressure, the hydrostatic fluid pressure at three different points, point A, point B, and point C. Right? And so again, remember, this is the formula we have to calculate the hydrostatic pressure at any point. Pressure at any given point is pressure on the top, right? Uh, plus rho, g, and, and height. So rho is the density of oil in this case. So let's figure that out uh, uh, at A. So pressure at A, right? So first, so remember in, in hydrostatic pressure it just depends on the vertical higher depth right depth means it, it has to you have to measure from the surface of the liquid right so this is the depth uh, 100 minus 50 okay so it's a 50 centimeter right so it's 0 0.5 meter so that's the height you will be using here to calculate the pressure at you so pressure on the top which is open to the atmosphere uh, is uh, you know uh, it's one atmosphere and it's a big number 1.013 10 to the power fifth plus density of oil which is 900 times 9.8 times height in this case is 50 centimeter but you must convert into you know meters because everything is given in standard units so it's half so that should be the pressure at A <coughs> And if you do this calculation, so uh, you can do this calculation, and this is about 106. So I'm gonna keep it in kilopascals. If if the numbers are big, you can keep it in kilopascal or just leave it in pascals. That's not a big deal. Okay. Similarly, uh, pressure at B uh, must be equal to pressure at C, right? Because they are at why? Because they are at same depth, right? Same depth. And what's the depth? So it's exactly 100 centimeter. So you, this height edge is is the depth. Or you, the depth you always measure from the top of the surface, the liquid surface. You know. So in this case, your height is exactly one meter. So um, is P zero plus rho g h. So P at B or P at C, right? Pressure at B or P are same. So 1.013 tens to the power fifth. Uh, plus second term is rho is uh, the oil density gravity and height is exactly one meter and if you do that so it's gonna get you ele about 11 kilopascals which is higher than <coughs> uh, I'm sorry it's 110 it should be 110 Should be 100. Hundred ten. This is hundred ten kilopascals. This would be hundred ten, not eleven. And pressure at A is hundred six, and pressure at B and C is hundred ten kilopascals, which is higher than pressure at A, and obviously because it's more. Uh, B and C is at are uh, at uh, more deeper points. Uh, right. Okay, that's how you solve the problem. And let me show you one more calculation, okay, uh, on here. Now, how does this numbers, this pressure values change if you put some solid object, floating object here? So let me show you this calculation because you, in some cases, you might have to deal with that problem. So it's the second part of three. So I'm just giving you an example. So same. Uh, Container same container right 
and this is uh, filled with some oil and this is at uh, the scale is 0 50 centimeter 100 centimeter now question is it's open to the still open to the atmosphere but on the top of that you have some floating mass let's say you have some extra mass like piston right or any floating so this solid mass floating on the top of this liquid so how does that change uh, the pressure values so remember this is the point A is at 50 centimeter B and C is at 100 centimeter so I'm just gonna calculate one so how do you calculate the pressure at A now you have to do this so pressure on the top you use the same formula rho of oil gravity times height now pressure on the top has two parts right one is the atmosphere pressure obviously atmosphere is always there it's open plus pressure due to the mass the solid mass which you will have to calculate and this last term okay that's that's what you need to do okay so then now you have to do one more step so <clears throat> this is one atmosphere pressure same and how do you calculate the pressure due to the solid mass for solid mass pressure due to since um, if, if something is sitting here right how do you calculate the pressure how do you calculate the pressure exerted with by this mass here then you just go back to the <coughs> excuse me you go back to the um, first very first definition of pressure pressure is just force by mass force by area force by unit and force is just the mass terms gravity that's what you do so mass times gravity mg weight of the object right divided by area uh, plus rho of oil gravity and so here um, then the mass will be given the mass of this object floating right on this liquid will be given to you and the cross sectional area will also be given which is pi r square the radius of the the radius of this tube will be given okay so if on the top of that if something is floating here uh, that will change that will increase the pressure that will increase the pressure at any point okay so that's what you need to do so next problem is on hydraulic lift system so as we discussed in our um, lecture slide a uh, small force can generate a uh, tremendous huge force you know on the other side uh, you know uh, so hydraulic system has this two two cylinders you know uh, connected by uh, this tube and one side is narrow uh, has narrow diameter compared to the wider section of the tube end and you know it's acting what downward force let's say f1 uh, will put this you know 2000 kilogram car in, in static equilibrium in an equilibrium right so it will generate a huge force right so what force is required to keep this to lift this um, 2000 kilogram uh, car right and put them in static equilibrium so you just need to use uh, the Pascal's uh, law here, and the, the, the these diameters are given. This let's say d1, let's say this is the d2. The diameters are given, uh, you know, and uh, so it's asking how, what force will be required to lift 2,000 kilogram car, and Pascal's law. So what does Pascal's law of fluid transmission say? It says when you apply some force here it produces some pressure change in pressure it, it produces some change in pressure so pascal's law simply says any change in pressure in a closed system like this will be transmitted undiminished will be transmitted equally everywhere so pressure well, any change in pressure is equal to the pressure here or equal to pressure here so pressure is force per area so f1 over a1 which is the pressure generated at the at the left tube 
narrow m2 must be equal to uh, pressure generated at the wider section of the tube which is f2 over area 2 areas are different the cross sectional area are different this is much bigger than the, this so then you solve for f1 so a1 over a2 right algebraically times f2 but area is right for a cylindrical tube area is pi d square because diameter is given or pi uh, no in terms of diameter, pi d square over 4 or pi r square pi square pi r square is the same as pi d square over 4. Okay, so uh, you can use one of those. So I'm going to use in, uh, in terms of radius. So area of cross section is pi r square. And F2 is, <coughs> F2 is the force, right, mass times gravity. Mass of the car is given, 2,000 kilogram. So force is mass times gravity. Okay, so R1 is the radius of the narrow tube, narrow section left tube, which is, um, it says the piston one has a 10 centimeter uh, diameter, so 5 centimeter diameter, 5 centimeter radius. So it's uh, 5 centimeter means 0 0.05 square. R2 is the uh, diameter of the piston two, which is 80 centimeter. So uh, the diameter is 80 centimeter, radius will be 40 centimeter. So 40 centimeter means 0 0.4 and there's a square. Mass of the car is 2000 and gravity. So that's the force you need to lift this car. And if you do this calculation is 0 0.300, okay. So it's just in 300, about 300 Newton's force, uh, you know, to lift this massive car. So here's the next problem. So it says uh, this U-shaped tube is filled with mercury, some mercury initially. This is, this fluid is mercury, symbol is G. And it says, um, it's, it must balance, remember, it, the, it must, the label, it must be labeled. Now it says, um, it is, the left hand tube is filled with some water. You, water is poured into the left um, until the water is filled with 10 centimeter dip right and now uh, since you have two different liquids they don't maintain the equilibrium they don't maintain the level right because you have water and you have mercury uh, but this because of water weight of the water uh, it will you know lift it will lift some of the mercury from its initial position so it's asking what's what would be the uh, you know how far upward from its initial position this is the initial position right uh, does the mercury in the right arm rise so it's basically asking this height this total height which is two times if you call this as as h right if you call this as the total height is twice h so it's asking how far upward from the initial position right uh, does uh, from its initial position does the uh, mercury uh, level rise so it's just acting uh, no <coughs> it's just acting the edge I'm sorry it's just acting uh, this height and this and these two heights must be same okay so uh, in final conditions once you pour the liquid the main idea is if you draw an imaginary line here pressure here and pressure here must be same so that's the basic idea to solve this problem, right? So pressure here at, let's say, pressure at point one must be equal to pressure at point two. Why? Because it is, everything is in static equilibrium, right? Uh, and there shouldn't be pressure difference between this and these two points. Otherwise, the liquid would, would flow, flow from, you know, higher to lower pressure, right? They must be same. And then just apply the hydrostatic pressure formula. Both ends are open to the atmosphere. Right, so the top pressure is just P0. So P1 on this left side of the tube, uh, P1 is the pre is like pressure at the bottom, right? Is pressure at the top, which is just atmosphere pressure plus density. This is water, density of water plus gravity times this height. Let's call it H1. 
which is ten centimeter given. Right hand side, on the other hand, same thing. You do the same thing. Pressure at the bottom, which is pressure P two, is pressure on the top P zero plus density of now. This is mercury. This is mercury. Okay. Plus um, gravity times um, this is twice h. Right. This size is twice h. So this because this is S plus S twice H. So that's why I put twice H here. So here P0, P0 are atmospheric pressure and they are you can algebraically you can just cancel them and then you are solving for H, right? That's what it is asking. So let's put all the numbers. So the density of water and this must be fresh water, it different doesn't say any anything is uh, we assume this is a fresh water. Fresh water has density of housing gravity and h1 is 10 centimeter but 10 centimeter must be in converted to meters All right uh, this h1 is 10 centimeter and it's 0 0.1 meter on the other hand because they are these are p zeros are already cancelled so density of the mercury which is 13600 if you are so that will be given 9.8 and twice h Again, 9.8, 9.8, gravity will cancel. And then you do the math, right? So, 1,000, 0.1, and you, I'm dividing both sides by this 1, 3, 6, 0, 0 times 2. And that's going to get you, right? I'm just dividing both sides by this to get the height. And you solve for the height. Uh, and this will be 0 0.00368 in meters and this is a small number and then you can convert back to millimeter so that's your answer so this mercury will rise by this amount this height you know once you pour the water so that's how you solve this problem now next problem is something like this this big tank container cylindrical container is full filled with now two types of liquid not just one type of liquid two types of liquid so first you pour some water up to uh, you know 120 centimeter depth and then on the top of that uh, oil uh, is poured onto top of water and uh, we assume that oil will not mix with water oil just floats on the top of water and this is just asking what's the total pressure down here at the bottom of this cylinder what's the total fluid pressure due to all these and this is again open to the atmosphere okay so then you use the same uh, uh, logic you know exactly same so first let's call pressure at this junction as p1 which we don't know yet right and we know our uh, formula hydrostatic formula pressure total total pressure at the bottom is pressure on the top which is in this case if you want to find the pressure down here first you need pressure on the top plus rho uh, water gravity height but what's the total pressure on the top so if you want to calculate pressure down here first you need pressure p1 because this is the top pressure for water right p1 plus density of water gravity times height this height I'm going to call uh, S2. And so you still to do solve one more step. So how do you find P1? So again, do the same thing. Repeat the same step. So P1 is P0 plus rho G H, right? So P1 is now becomes the pressure at the bottom here at this junction is P0 which is the atmosphere pressure plus rho now this is oil right uh, plus gravity times let's call this depth as H1 plus rho of water gravity times S2 so that's the total pressure down here at the bottom of this tank okay so remember this thing is just the pressure on the top here P1 so P1 you need to break down P1 that's the little trick you have to do. So now, now you can put all the numbers. So P0 is the atmospheric pressure, 1.013 times the power of fifth. 
plus density of oil is 900 is given to you uh, and gravity and the oil depth is 50 centimeter which is 0 0.5 plus this last term is density of water which is 1000 gravity and this the, the water is uh, the depth of the water is one point uh, centimeter which is 1.2 meters make sure you put everything in standard units so the total pressure once you calculate that the total pressure uh, down here is, so is 117 kilopascals so i have converted to kilopascals because it's a big number okay so that's how you you can solve so the next problem is about the vacuum function, you know, wall hoop, or similar to suction cup problem, you know. So remember the main physics behind that is uh, you when you uh, try to stick it first, you have to press it against the wall, right? And so when you do that, you are creating a partial vacuum, a low pressure region inside the cup. So this is the schematic diagram, right? When you press it, you are removing some of the air inside, so you are creating a low pressure region here but outside you still have one atmosphere pressure right and because of that you have a net force acting on this cup in this direction because high pressure is pressing it towards the lower part and then you can that's the reason you can easily stick it against a smooth surface so if you draw the free body diagram for the <clears throat> free body diagram when forces are involved you must draw the free body diagram uh, for the cup uh, and so hook this suction wall hook right uh, if you draw the free body diagram it will be something like that you have a greater let's say p1a this is the pressure force remember pressure force is pressure times area pressure force due to atmosphere right because atmosphere is pressing it in this direction so this is the net let's say this is the net pressure force acting in this direction but you still have some air molecules here it says um, the reduced pressure inside the cup is half atmospheric pressure right so you still have some uh, pressure coming from this you know the gas air molecules so that is little though like this so let's call P2A. This is due to, this is the pressure force due to air molecules, right? Because there's still, it's not completely vacuum. And that's why you have, what, what will be the net force? So net force will be that way, right? Because you have a bigger force, smaller force. So net force will be that way. And that's the force you need actually to separate it off the wall. It's actually calculate the force required to separate it off the wall. Okay. And F net is the force required to separate off the wall. Okay. So let's find that out. And this is just the difference, right? The net force here from this free body diagram would be so we just want the magnitude not the direction so p1a minus p2a so whenever you solve suction cup problem or something like this pressure difference it's just this the area of the area this circular area of cross section is common so eventually it just becomes you know the difference in pressure times the area is what you need to separate it after a while so pressure difference is what's the pressure difference so p1 is one atmosphere pressure right and minus you have half atmosphere pressure sitting inside the cup so half atmosphere pressure right times but this pressure is in atmosphere right so you have to multiply that by this pascal conversion right because why because one atm one atmosphere has that much pascal that's why and times you have to multiply by area of the cup this is a circular cup and it has its diameter is four centimeter right uh, so it's that's why its radius is uh, two centimeter which is 0 0.02 meters okay don't forget that 
So you're going to need pi r square, r is 0 0.02 square. So that's it. You're going to need that much force to separate this wall hoop off the wall. Okay. And just do that calculation. So just remember here. So it's these pressures are given in atmosphere. So if pressure is given in atmosphere, you must convert back to Pascals. And if you do that, it's going to be 64 Newtons. So you're going to need that much net force, right? Uh, if you want to separate this off the wall.